I'm sure that you will join me in looking forward to what our guest, Ellen Fisher, has to say tonight. And it is my great pleasure to welcome her to Binghamton University and to all of you to an evening that promises to be very stimulating. And again, I thank you for coming. Good evening. I'm delighted to be here. I'm delighted that you're here. Thank you very much, Justin Garcia and David Sloan Wilson for inviting me. Um, you've got a really um, uh, intellectually uh, uh, energetic campus. I'm, I'm really am impressed with it. So anyway, I'm, I want to tell you about two things tonight. Um, I and my colleagues have put 49 people who are madly in love into a brain scanner. Uh, 17 who had just fallen in love, 15 who had just been rejected in love, and 17 who report that they're still in love after an average of 21 years of marriage. So uh, that's probably why I, um, I'm here. But um, I also, uh, having done that, uh, Match.com, the internet dating site, came to me um, three years ago, three and a half years ago, and asked me to start a new dating site for them. It's now called Chemistry.com. And um, uh, five million Americans have taken my questionnaire on chemistry.com, and two million in 39 other countries have taken it. And my question was, um, why do you fall in love with one person rather than another? I had spent all these years trying to figure out what happens in the brain when you fall in love. And then my next question is, why, do, why, would, why would somebody say, we, we have chemistry? and somebody else say, we didn't have any chemistry. Was there, is there something about our human chemistry that draws us to some people rather than others? So uh, tonight I want to first talk about um, the brain scanning and what love is and why it evolved and then go into uh, the subject that's at the moment dearest to my heart, uh, why him, why her. Around the world people love. They sing for love, they dance for love, they compose poems and stories about love. They retell myths and legends about love. They have love charms, love potions, love magic. They pine for love, they live for love, they kill for love, and they die for love. Anthropologists have now found evidence of romantic love in 170 societies, and not in one culture in the world where they've actually looked have they not found it. Every, they were so far no negative evidence. Uh, but in fact, so many people describe love differently that I've come to believe uh, that we've evolved three distinctly, I divide love into three uh, really distinctly different brain systems. The sex drive associated with uh, testosterone in both men and women. W.H. Uh, Auden called it an intolerable neural itch. Uh, Pablo Neruda called it an eternal thirst or an infinite ache. Uh, you can feel it uh, not even for a particular person. You can feel uh, the sex drive when you're driving along in your car, when you uh, read a book, when you watch a movie, when you think of something while you're sitting in a chair. Uh, uh, it doesn't necessarily uh, focus on one particular human being. The second of the three brain systems is romantic love, that um, focus. Uh, the craving, the possessiveness. I'll talk more about it in a minute. Um, it, people call it passionate love, obsessive love, being in love, infatuation. I think they're all combinations of the same thing. Um, George Bernard Shaw summed up uh, love, I think, um, very well. He said, love consists of overestimating the differences between one woman and another. And indeed, uh, that's what we do. And I and my colleagues have now begun to figure out some of the brain systems that are involved. Certainly, dopamine is, and I think also norepinephrine is. That's what gives you the pounding heart, the sweaty palms, um, the stammering, and low levels of serotonin, which is what I think gives you the obsessive thinking. Of all of the characteristics of romantic love, I think the most, um, uh, the core of it is that you can't stop thinking about this person. There's somebody camping in your head. Um, and the last of the three brain systems is attachment. Other scientists have associated it with dif uh, different brain uh, chemical systems, oxytocin and vasopressin. And in fact, um, these three brain systems can be um, very well connected to each other. For example, when you fall in love with somebody, uh, dopamine is going up, and um, suddenly every single thing about that person becomes sexually attractive to you. Yesterday it was another 
nice guy at the gym or um, a, a, a good-looking woman sitting in your French class. And all of a sudden, every single thing that they do is, uh, is sexual to them. Just the way they hold their pencil or um, walk to the, uh, down the hall. Everything about them becomes sexual. And I think it's because, uh, at least in part, because elevated activity in the dopamine system triggers testosterone and, and shoots up the sex drive. And of course, that's the whole point of romantic love. I mean, it's to trigger the sex drive and start uh, reproduction. So let's thank Helen uh, one more time. Thank you.